Everyone has a phobia of some sorts, an extreme fear of something. And the unique thing about phobias is they're subjective. Some fear spiders, while others fear olives. Some have nyknophobia, and others have hippopotamonstrosisquipped aliophobia. And if you have this, I'm so sorry I shared this example. The range of fears is seemingly endless in this world, but we all have that one specific phobia we struggle with. That, that one fear we can't seem to shake off. And as for me personally, I have to deal with... Thalassophobia is an intense fear of large or deep water. Uh, it, it's weird though. I don't fear lakes. I love swimming at the beach. But if you show me a picture like this, I'm peeing my pants right now. Me and Subnautica? Uh, yeah, we're not friends. I don't like this. It's hard for me to even show game footage of this. In yeah, no, no, we're not, we're not doing this right now. It's not even so much the water itself, but more so what's in the depths of these waters that strike fear to my soul. Sharks are a no-no, eels are creepy, and I don't even like the idea of swimming with dolphins. So you know what my phobia is, but I'll do you one better why my phobia is. Fears, for the most part, have a cause and effect behavior. Like, yeah, some phobias just come out of nowhere. I mean, how else do you get a fear of dark, creepy basements? It just happens so naturally. But most of the time, fears have a past attachment to them. And with this thought, it got me thinking of my own life. How the heck was I the lucky winner to receive thalassophobia? I'm a Midwest boy with no ocean coast in sight. I don't have a traumatic shark experience from childhood. Jeez, I, I didn't even watch Jaws growing up. My mind was puzzled with the question of, why do I even have this fear? All I did as a kid was play games like Super Mario Galaxy on my Nintendo Wii. Now this is more my speed. Just a hop, skip, and a launch through an amazing galactic adventure. No fear in sight, just a plumber in space and... When it comes to my childhood, there were quite a few influences, but nothing would compare to the prominence of a certain gaming company. You know, Minecraft won some battles, but Nintendo won the war. This company, alongside its main mascot Mario, was my childhood. Ever since I could remember, this guy has been a part of my life. He was my Super Mario world. I had Super Mario 64 reasons to like this guy. My love for this company wasn't Paper Mario thin. When you're surrounded by a character who has multiple magical games under his belt, it's safe to say that a young child who got lost in these worlds time and time again would be influenced one way or another. I think Nintendo gave me thalassophobia. There's a common theme in all of this. Um, I experienced multiple accounts of aquatic creatures in Nintendo games that I don't really look back upon fondly. Uh, we're not only taking a trip down memory lane, but also analyzing these suspects that I believe fueled my phobia of the ocean. So, so let's stop the chit chat. Let's go back to where it all began. three of Mario Bros. 3 is a level that will forever be ingrained in my head. Not only was it a level I struggled to get past as a kid, but it was also my first traumatic aquatic encounter. And she goes by the name of Big Bertha. Big Bertha is a big red fish with a big buck tooth and has the pregnancy munchie something awful. A mad mother is something everyone fears. This one happens to be in fish form. I hated this freaking fish. Not only is it nagging you the entire level, but one misstep and you're just gone. J -j just gulped up like Jonah and the whale. I remember the distinct feeling of falling in the water and feeling the sense of both dread and adrenaline that my five-year-old body had never experienced in its lifetime. This fish wasn't on a nice afternoon stroll. It was out to get you. It was a threat. It didn't matter what you did, it wanted to eat you. Now, something to note here is this level was painful to get through as a child. I mean, it was tough. 
which meant not only did I have this challenging platforming to deal with, but I also had to face Big Bertha every single time I played this. So, I think this difficulty almost amplified my anxiety with this stupid fish. I seriously believe the sheer stress and intimidation of Bertha, coupled with the difficulty this level brought me in my younger years, set my trajectory down a fish-fearing path that would ultimately lead to what it is today. There's no doubt that Big Bertha was scary to me, but it wouldn't be long until my next encounter that fired up this phobia. Now we're playing with superpower. The Porcupuffer from Super Mario World. Now, I remember this one a little more vividly. This thing was a menace. He didn't show up too often throughout the game, but I remember the day he did. To me, this fish always seemed a little more intimidating with the angry expression as well as the super spiky back. Simply put, 16 bits didn't make things look friendlier. It also had this like unique movement to it. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's almost like vibrating while also strangely following the scrolling in an unorthodox way. I swear I'm not crazy. Due to these weird swim patterns, as a kid, it was hard to avoid. And not only that, it looked awfully painful to land on. This one by far is one of the more memorable ones for me. In later entries in the Mario series, in my opinion, it never quite matched the menacing look of the original. Something about it, man, the way it looks and acts, it was just so threatening. This old strategy guide even refers to him as thinking he owns the ocean. Well, I can tell you this much, this dude owned my mental ocean rent-free. I will never forget this guy and just think, We've only been in a 2D space. Trust me, it gets worse. I know this ain't Mario, but come on, it's close enough. I grew up playing Banjo-Kazooie and just having an absolute blast exploring this world. It was such a charming adventure, pieced together so perfectly. Throughout the game, you meet various characters and creatures, and if you played the game before, your initial thought would probably be a prominent character found throughout level three, Clanker's Cavern. This is Clanker, a giant metal shark chained up in this dirty old cavern. And while I do admit waltzing up to the sky for the first time is pretty frightening at first, He's just been waiting there. Reminds me of someone staring at an apartment peephole. I don't remember being super frightened of him, at, at least for not very long. Maybe because he was near the surface? Maybe because I got acquainted with him? I don't know. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure this dude played some role in my phobia, because obviously I can see why people would be terrified. But if anything, for me personally, I would consider this guy more of an honorable mention. But we aren't done, because if we back up to World 2 Treasure Trove Cove, we're introduced to something that's a little more menacing. Let me set the stage for you first. The game has these collectible Jinjos, and they're scattered in each level. And if you're ever near one, they start making a noise. Okay, cool, so you make your way over to Treasure Trove Cove, and you spawn on a deck. Now, if you sit idle for a second, you'll eventually hear a Jinjo, and sure enough, there's one right under the deck. So you start swimming towards it, and all of a sudden, the music shifts into this terrifying theme reminiscent of Jaws as a big, scary shark starts barreling towards you, and you're formally introduced to Snacker. Good? Grief. I kid you not, I still get a burst of adrenaline when swimming in Treasure Trove Cove. Like, I am serious. Literally though, it's gotta be the music. You go from this fun tropical beat to suddenly all joy is sucked out of you in a moment's notice and you start to feel the thick presence of this huge hungry hostile shark that's sole purpose is to eat you alive. Okay, yeah, it fits the theme of the level, but geez, the moment you dip the very tip of your toes in the water, this dude bolts his way towards you. As a kid, I loved Banjo-Kazooie, but Snacker solidified his way into my dreams. Another honorable mention is Lord Fak Fak from Banjo-Tooie. I faintly remember stumbling upon this guy randomly in the game, and he may not be the most memorable one for me, but I guarantee I didn't enjoy his company either. You know, if we're on the topic of honorable mentions, I gotta get this one out of the way. Super Mario Sunshine is weird. I never fully completed this one as a kid, but I'm kind of thankful because my young innocent eyes never had to witness 
this. Eely Mouth from Noki Bay is a creepy, ginormous yellow-eyed eel. The free falling entering into this mission is so incredibly eerie, it just tickles my thalassophobia sensors like crazy. Submerged in deep murky water with four glowing eyes staring right at you? Yeah, this isn't haunting at all. Look at the size of this thing, my goodness. And of course the whole gimmick of this mission is to get up close and personal to wash this thing's teeth. Great. At the very least, it's stuck in a hole, but man, I am lucky I never found this thing as a child. That's mainly why it's an honorable mention. I never got this far in Sunshine to ever come across Ely Mouth, but if we're talking Nintendo Sea creatures, this one had to be mentioned. And you know for a fact, if I ever did witness this in my childhood, Sunshine would have never been seen again. I'm already sick of 3D. Can we step away from the Z axis, please? Uh, close enough. Ah yes, new Super Mario Bros. DS, a classic. What does this game have in store in the aquatic apartment? Uh, okay, hey, th this ain't too bad. These don't look too menacing, all right. Um, what else do they have? Why is he smiling? Spike Bass, only appearing in new Super Mario Bros. DS, is basically if the Porky Puffer and Big Bertha had a baby. That's not canon, I'm just stating an observation. It looks like it could do some damage with its sharp smile and pointy thorns all over his body. I remember this one giving me some hassle on the DS. Um, he's scary for sure, but honestly what makes me more uncomfortable is the fact that he looks like he takes pleasure in tormenting children. He's deceivingly big too, like I'm always shocked to see just how massive he looks when jumping out of the water. He's pointy and round like the Porky Puffer, aggressive and red like Big Bertha. It's a match made in heaven for those who had horrible experiences with these aquatic creatures. Thanks, Nintendo! I sound like a broken record by this point. Uh, he was scary. I didn't like him. Moving on. Super Mario Galaxy is peak childhood gaming. This is an amazing journey all the way through. I just wish Mario would stop traumatizing me for one second! Let me introduce you to King Finn from Super Mario Galaxy on the Nintendo Wii system. Okay, to be fair, I have pretty faint memories of this boss, but oh my groceries, this thing is massive and massively creepy. Again, I feel like Nintendo is messing with me. Look at this intro, look at his face, look at this planet. You're isolated on a dark water sphere with the only inhabitant being this fine gentleman. You're probably thinking, well, if you're so scared of him, how are you recording footage? very carefully. I will say, if we're talking the current state of my thalassophobia, I honestly think Kingfin's fight is one of the more anxious experiences for me. Especially looking down at this guy from a bird's eye view, um, my heart kind of sinks a little bit. It's crazy to look back and experience a revelation from your childhood to this degree. I would have never thought that such a beloved company of mine would also be my detriment and the contributing factor to one of my biggest phobias ever. I mean, the proof is in the pudding from NES to Wii. Every time I see these guys, I just get like this burst of physical memories. Like, I remember how it felt to face these fish again. Like, I, I don't know, I just can feel it in my gut. <laughs> Why are we back on the Nintendo 64? I don't even know where to begin. I'm pretty speechless, and I know I'm not the only one who has been affected by the eel from Super Mario 64. This guy is straight nightmare fuel! The definition of thalassophobia, in my humble opinion. 
I wouldn't be surprised if this dude is the sole reason I have this fear in the first place. He's found at the bottom of Jolly Roger Bay, and my first encounter with him was life-changing. Look at the eyes, the razor-sharp teeth. Something about this model will forever be stamped in my memory. The level atmosphere doesn't help either. Um, it's dark, a little eerie even, and the music is a mix of calming tones, but also unsettling matched with its theme. <laughs> oh man, that Nintendo, I'll tell ya. That Nintendo liked to tease us children. You know, you first find him stuck in a sunken ship, um, he's still terrifying, but it's nice to see him at least contained. However, the developers had the audacity to force you to mingle with this eel the very next mission. Can the eel come out and play? No, are you kidding me? They let the eel loose. Um, he's out and about, and oh my gosh, this is 15 feet full of fright. I remember this face haunting me. The game even forced me to approach this thing multiple times. I couldn't help but imagine what was in the eel's den, what other creatures lurked within the ocean of Super Mario 64. I believe this very eel was the pivotal moment of my thalassophobia. No joke, the last straw with sea creatures Period. Nintendo knew the haunting influence this thing had on many. They absolutely knew. In 2017, they even made a callback reference in Super Mario Odyssey, and oh my gosh, are you kidding me? They managed to make it even more terrifying. In 2023, this thing made an appearance in the Mario movie, and it was three times the size. Nintendo, why are you out to get me? I'm sorry, I disliked Mario Kart Tour, okay? I am talking about a franchise starring an Italian plumber who just so happened to encounter aquatic life that traumatized a person to such a degree that it is still actively affecting his full-grown adult life. I need a breather. No, you need therapy. The more I think about it, the more it solidifies the fact that Nintendo absolutely influenced my philosophobia. I would like to believe I'm not the only one who's experienced fear from some of these creatures. I get that there are phobias out there that are pretty common, some just have a natural sense of scared to them. But to have a fear genuinely stem from a company you also love so dearly is such a bizarre feeling. Nostalgia can be a very powerful thing. And I believe it can also attach itself to other feelings as well, including fear. I mean, like, I love Mario 64. I love Super Mario World. And when playing these, it's not like I'm paralyzed in fear when encountering these aquatic creatures again. However, like referenced before, I remember how I felt when facing them. And I think that just goes to show just how engrossed I was into these worlds as a child. That or, or these things are just objectively scary. I, I mean, I, I don't know. You tell me. I, I don't know.